Hello and welcome to this Civil Service Behaviour Series video. In this series, we break down all nine of the core behaviours that can be tested within your civil service application. On today's agenda is the behaviour of working together, and more specifically, that dreaded interview stage. We're going to be looking at what working together actually means. Well, what your interviewer thinks it means anyway. Then we're going to deep dive into the questions that you can be asked in your interview. There's five questions we will look at, and we'll go over how best to answer them. And then finally, I'm going to share with you the questions that you should be wary of, as they may cause you to drop your guard, which will impact how well you are scored in the interview. But, first things first, we can't show off our abilities if we don't understand what it is we're being assessed on. The Civil Service defines working together as the forming of effective partnerships and relationships with people both internally and externally from a range of diverse backgrounds, sharing information, resources and support. Fundamentally, working together is looking at how well you can come together with other people in order to produce quality deliverables. There are two key aspects that you will be assessed on when it comes to this. The first is obvious. How well do you play with others? Are you a team player who can bring out the best in other people? Is a team that you are part of greater than the sum of its parts? The second aspect you will be assessed on is your ability to realise when enlisting others is beneficial to your work and how well you can find the correct people to assist you in your task. And are you able to demonstrate all of that with examples from your experience? If so, let's take a look at some of the questions you can be asked. The first question we'll look at is, tell me about a time you had to motivate a team. This question is super popular in and out of the civil service. It's the classic working together question. It's assessing your ability to manage team cohesion and get everyone on the same page and geared up to ensure you meet your targets. This is what the interviewer is wanting to see, so make sure you give them it. Pick an example with a demoralized team or one that needed that little extra push to get across the line. Talk about what you did that brought everyone around and got the job done. Before we discuss the next question, let's drill deeper into how to answer civil service behaviour questions. These questions you're going to be asked are called competency-based questions and are designed for you to share an example from your experience with the interviewer. The answer you give should be full and detailed, yet it should also be concise and to the point. It's a paradox, I know. Basically, you should stay on point and refrain from any non-relevant and non-important matters. Simply stick to the important points in a well-structured manner. And the best way to do this is by using the B-star method. Using B-star, you will split your answer into five key parts. The first is the B, which stands for belief. You want to begin your response by sharing your thoughts and feelings regarding the subject matter. This helps set the stage for your story and demonstrate your personal connection to the topic. This doesn't make much sense. Check out the show notes with example answers for all the questions in this video. Next up, we have S, the situation. Briefly describe the context of the scenario in which your actions took place. This provides the interviewer with an understanding of the circumstances surrounding your experience. Remember, it's essential to keep this part concise as the primary focus should be on your actions and the results. Look at the five W's, who, what, where, when, why and incorporate the relevant ones into your story. Following the situation, we have T for task. Explain your specific role and responsibilities in the situation. By doing this, you highlight what you were entrusted with in your previous roles, and also lets the interviewer understand what expectations were made of you within the situation at hand. Up next, we have the most important section, and that is A for action. Describe the steps you took to achieve the desired outcome and explain the rationale behind your actions. This section and the results section should be the most detailed as it illustrates exactly what you're capable of doing and achieving. And then finally, we have R, the results. Conclude your response with the results of your actions using figures or quantifiable outcomes whenever possible. This will demonstrate to the interviewer the impact of your efforts and your ability to deliver tangible results in your role. This is also where you can share any lessons you learn from the experience, should you wish. Now, keeping that structure in mind, let's take a look at some more questions. Question two is tell me about the time you worked with the team and what your contribution was. 
This question is seeing how you fare in a team setting. It's about illustrating your role in a group dynamic and the positive impact your contributions had on reaching the team's goals. When answering, focus on a specific project where your input was crucial. Describe the context, your actions, and how they directly contributed to the team's success. Now let's tackle a question that gets to the heart of collaborative growth within a team. This one is, tell me about a time when you helped a co-worker learn a new skill. This question is quintessential working together. It's not just about your own development, but also about how you lift others alongside you, enhancing the collective competence of your team. Choose an example where your mentoring made a significant difference. Share how you approached the teaching moment, the methods you used, and the positive change it instigated, not just for the individual, but for the whole team. Next up is a question that tests your interpersonal and partnership building skills, both of which are integral to the working together behavior. Question is, tell me about the time you had to manage a difficult stakeholder. This one is about your diplomatic acumen and your ability to bring harmony and direction to challenging interactions, thereby ensuring that everyone is working towards a common purpose despite potential conflicts. In your answer, Share an example where your tact and strategic insight turned the challenging stakeholder relationship into a productive and collaborative one. Emphasize your communication skills and the positive outcome that followed. Lastly, we imagine a scenario where your communication skills are paramount in maintaining unity and collaboration in stressful times. This one is, tell me about a time when you communicated effectively in a difficult situation. This examines your ability to keep the team together when the going gets tough. Effective communication in such times is key to upholding the working together standard, ensuring that stress doesn't fracture the team's efforts and put the project at risk. Select an instant where your clarity and calmness in communication preserved team integrity and led to a positive resolution. Detail the situation, what your communication strategy was, and its impact on the team and the project's outcome. And that is the last question we have for you in this video. But before we go, there's one more question type that I want to share with you that you should always be on the lookout for in your civil service applications. And that is ungraded questions. You'll know the question is ungraded because the interviewer will tell you as much. These questions are usually quite innocuous sounding. Things like, what do you like to do at the weekends? Or what hobbies are you passionate about? These are the type of things that you will be asking ungraded questions. You will be told these questions are just icebreakers or that they are just there to make you feel at ease and not to worry because you won't be scored on these questions, which in fairness is all true. But what they're not telling you is that your answers and more specifically how you answer is going to be used as a benchmark when assessing and grading your other answers. Remember that when grading your answers, one of the things they're looking at is how enthusiastic you are and how much you seem motivated by what you do. If you're very passionate about your weekend plans, but seemingly unenthused about your actions and previous roles, this will be noted and this will affect your overall interview score. This is just something to keep in mind when answering these so-called ungraded questions. Right, that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed our content, please don't forget to subscribe so you can see more of our career guidance videos. If you're still nervous about your upcoming interview, check out the show notes for more resources and don't hesitate to drop a question in the comments below and we will help in any way we can. That is it from me. Good luck in your future applications with the civil service and take care.